Hey guys, John here from Sonic Drive Studio. Welcome back to the channel. I've been getting a lot of questions recently on how I record and process my guitars. People were basically interested in the whole signal chain or signal flow of the guitars. So how I go about recording and processing my guitars. So we're going to take a look at that today. First, we're going to check out a couple of filthy riffs that I recorded with my ESP LTD NW44. It's a killer guitar that is equipped with a bare knuckle aftermath pickup. And those tracks were reamped through my trusty Mesa Boogie dual rectifier and an Ownhammer impulse response from the Workhorse V30 collection. Let's take a listen right now, and then after that, I will walk you through the signal chain. Here we go. A pretty thick and nasty rectifier tone, eh? I love it. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. What I always like to do is record my dry DI tracks alongside my processed or amped signals, just so I'm able to reamp the guitar parts when the recordings are done. The Fractal Audio XFX3 tends to be my primary recording interface, and it allows you to record your DI tracks straight from the front input. I love reamping a lot, and to me, it only has benefits. Some people seem to be against it for some reason, but I've only had positive experiences with it. As long as you record a high quality DI signal, you should be able to reamp just fine. And if you dial in everything properly, no one will even notice or care that you recorded the guitar parts with another amp or modeler initially. So often when I record, my guitar goes straight into the front of my XFX3. And remember, like I just said, that allows me to record my DI tracks alongside the processed signals. But note that I also often like to record my guitars with my Line 6 Helix Rack or HX Stomp, because I just love the amp models and effects of those units. So whenever I like to record with those units, I just plug my guitar straight into the instrument inputs and record everything straight into my DAW via USB. All my modelers and sound card devices, including my Line 6 devices and my XFX3, are connected to my computer via USB, so I can always record directly with as few AD or DA conversions as possible. I even bought a couple of SPDIF cables so that I can connect my Kemper digitally to my XFX3. Sometimes when I get into my creative mode, I like to plug my guitar into one of these things. It's like a little true bypass pedal switcher. It's the pole position by Veilton. It's quite affordable, but it works very well for me. This helps me to leave all my favorite pedals connected without having to run the signal through all of them. In that case, the guitar goes directly in and out of the switcher and into my recording interface. In the case of the riffs that I just showed you, I used my XFX3 to record my DI signals and I used that as my primary audio interface. It's a very flexible device when it comes to recording and reamping guitar tracks through external hardware like amps. It has a bunch of in and outputs that you can use for various things and route however you'd like. Here's the basic preset that I'm using here to route the DI signal from the DAW through my amp and load box. The input signal is being fed from the DAW via USB into input one. From there, it's routed to output three. Output three is going directly into the amp this time, so no pedals up front. And for that purpose, I'm using a Fractal Audio Humbuster cable. This really helps to reduce unwanted noise as these types of setups tend to introduce some extra noise. So for these riffs, we're going straight into my trusty Mesa Boogie dual rectifier on the red channel on modern mode. And then the amp is being fed into my Fractal Audio LB2 reactive load box. My trusty load box that I have been using for years. I'm also getting a two notes Captor X soon, so that will also be very interesting. I'm hoping that the Captor X will add another good flavor to my setup, just so I can gain a little bit of extra flexibility. I'll keep you guys posted on that one, of course. Now the signal from the load box is going back into input three of the XFX. I like to turn the DI level on my LB2 load box up quite loud because the signal sounds the purest with those settings. That's why I have to compensate a little bit with the level in the input three block of the XFX. 
just to make sure that the signal isn't coming in too hot. So I'm just lowering the input levels there for about 8 decibels or so. And then for high gain tones, I often have a noise gate block after the input, just to remove some noise or hiss, etc. If I record IRs directly onto the reamped tracks, I just use the cab block in the fractal. But for this song, I recorded the tracks without an IR, and I applied the IR processing in Helix Native. So this is the DAW session with all the tracks. We have the DI tracks on top, left and right, and the reamped or processed tracks underneath, both panned hard to the left and to the right. I applied Helix Native to both of the recorded guitars. For the cab tones, I'm using an impulse response from the Ownhammer Workhorse V30 collection IR pack. Those IRs only work in the Line 6 Helix hardware or the Helix Native plugin as I'm doing right here. I'm using the 412 oversized cabinet with the V30 modern option and the high gain mic mix for that bright and chunky modern sound. I've also used Helix Native to apply some very subtle room reverb with the legacy reverb block. Helix Native can be a very handy sort of hub for processing your guitars, since it's easy to automate and it has so many cool and unique effects. For this song, I punched in a subtle delay on the higher chorus riff just to give it some ambience. And that effect is turned on by automation via the snapshot feature. And then the two guitars are being routed into the guitar groove track. Here I applied some subtle processing as well. We have the Slate Digital Virtual Tape Machines and the VCC. Those add some very subtle analog flavor that basically help to glue the mix together. And in this Slate SSL EQ, I'm doing no EQ aside from a simple high pass filter at around 82 Hz just to clear out some mud and to make room for the bass guitar and kick drum. So I almost never ever add EQ to my guitar tracks at all. If I don't like a sound that I'm getting, I just prefer to go back to the amp and tweak the EQ and gain, or maybe change the IR out. It just sounds much more natural to me than EQing it. So this setup is super flexible to me, and it basically allows me to come up with some killer guitar tones fast. All right, folks, that's all for this video. I hope it was helpful and enjoyable. Thank you so much for watching. Please drop a comment and a like below. And if you haven't already, please hit subscribe along with the bell. And you can also follow Sonic Drive Studio on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you so much and I hope to see you in my next video. Cheers. <laughs>